Good luck. Welcome back. This is week, I think, 117 of the sh uh, weekly ladder, aka the teaching ladder that we do on 81 Dojo. Uh, so, in this tournament, you get to play against a higher rated opponent and a lower rated opponent. And uh, it's a great learning experience for all of us. Um, each time I try to do something a bit different. I haven't decided... Well, you know, let's do this this time. I haven't always decided in advance which strategy is most enticing. So, I do vary it up a lot. Um, perhaps against... Um, some players I might prefer one set of openings against others I might prefer a different set. Um, I did see Killer Ducky did this fun thing with Millennium Castle on his live stream, and I'm wondering, like, what does it take for me to replicate what he's doing? Um, so I'm not fully aware of the limits of this, because I don't generally play double static rook. Um, I have some notion, because I've played this game before, but it's still a learning experience for all of us. I could bring this silver toward the center to protect this point, um, protect this point as well and vaguely threaten the possibility of bringing the silver up into the right. Um, that's one idea. So I think... I'm not entirely sure what the proverb means either. Frequently you'll see a pawn advance and then you exchange there and you'll have an option to capture sideways. And I think that's what the proverb is referring to, is capturing sideways with a rook. Or whatever other piece is close to invading. That could do a sideways capture. I think that's what that proverb refers to. I could be wrong. So here, yeah, we're both debating, like... Obviously, pushing the pawns looks quite exciting, but also defensive moves look interesting like that. And I'd like to not do exactly the same thing they're doing, just to try to keep it interesting. If I do push this pawn, eventually they'll have a bishop drop here hitting this. Therefore, I don't know. In general, this gets played frequently. I don't know if this is the right move in this position. But it looks interesting. So this defense points in front of my king. I could also like move my king to do some of that. Um, moving this here does deny the option of moving the silver here and just breaking it out immediately. But it protects this central point that I don't really know the best way to protect. Further, I could consider pushing my center pawn and moving the silver again. It gets risky when I have too many pieces floating about, unsupported by other pieces, but it's exciting to try things. Um, so here, I'm Debating gold up, pawn up, pawn takes, rook takes, um, exchange bishops and move the silver up. That's one option. Another option, move the bishop right now. If they exchange bishops, knight takes. If they push the pawn, pawn takes, rook takes, bishop drop, rook goes somewhere and I take here. Threatening stuff, but that doesn't look good enough. I wonder. Yeah, having this... No well, 
Having the knight up there has other advantages too, but I just played a silver wall trapping my king. So, it's risky. Bishop, bishop takes, knight takes. Pawn up, pawn takes, rook takes, bishop drop, or just move the knight up. Uh, rook promotes. Hmm. 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 Could also just move the gold here. Pawn up, pawn takes, rook takes. If we exchange, I still have the same drop, although I lose a knight. Um. Hmm. It's complicated. I could also push my rook pawn first. In exchange my rook's exposed first. That's dangerous. Um. Hmm. Well, I would like to see how this plays. I'm curious. So, if they do nothing, I can bring a general up to support my bishop. Um, many things are possible. Since they've moved this gold away from the center, I could potentially hit both of these points, and various things could be loose here. Um, not just my king. Uh, what I'm concerned about, I think, the most is if we exchange bishops and they, they drop back on the same diagonal. How do I try to hold things together? But it looks interesting. It looks like there could be ways to hold things together and build some initiative while doing it. Generally, the second player will try to close this diagonal. Um, but I don't know that it's necessary. Yeah, at some point I really need to get this pawn moving, but I don't want to do it prematurely because then this attack strikes harder. I don't want to give them a pawn in hand before they already have a pawn in hand. Um. At least that's my reasoning. It might not be the right reasoning here. But I figure if I have my knight out and they start attacking and my knight hits this and I have a bishop also hitting this, and then it's just... I have a lot of chances here. I don't know for certain where it leads, but I have four generals pretty close to my king. So I don't think I get mated. Okay. So they also favor calming things down a touch. Reasonable. That's an opinion that I can agree with. Um... All right, so I defend my bishop, and suddenly many of these extremely crazy tactics where all these things are hanging at once and all these things are hanging at once uh, aren't what we're looking at anymore. 
Okay, I do have the correct overlay set, so that's good. Um, I can take this. It's a free pawn. Hmm. If I delay taking it, I don't see any advantage to delaying this capture. So we'll just take the free pawn. Also, it seems the piece snapping noises are a bit quiet. Hopefully you wouldn't mind if I increase the volume a touch. I'm going to boost this here. At least to me it feels quiet. Hopefully there's not tremendous echo after I've done this. But once we enter Biyomi, I'm eating to quiet it again. So I have one pawn in hand. Um, yeah, I don't see them being able to drop a bishop on any of these squares or any of these squares. And further, I've defended these three pawns that are adjacent, and I've defended these four pawns, so a bishop by itself is not going to be able to um, exploit any weakness here. It would be a different story, say, if I left this hole open, like I did in a game yesterday. And that was pretty sad. <laughs> that game went downhill in a hurry. Um, hmm. So, uh, pawns tend to be good for opposing bishops. Uh, otherwise, their threatening bishop takes gold. But if I push this pawn, now they've committed this bishop and it can't go anywhere else. Hence, committed. Um, I don't know if there's a better way for me to deal with this. Like, if I bring this gold, silver up and they sack for this, now they can drop a gold. And so that's not so great. If I move this somewhere else, the lance hangs. So I don't see any counterattack. I, yeah, I don't really like pushing this pawn up because it does make a definitive target. But uh, I am up a pawn. And this does block the bishop. So I could bring more pieces to defend this center. I'm debating at present, how do I build a castle out of what I've done? I'm not sure. But yeah, they've built half of a... Well, they've kind of built a fortress, except instead of a silver on top, they have a bishop on top. Um, I did just watch Muranaka do a video about the parallel diagonal bishop, where you drop the bishop on a uh, diagonal parallel to this one, and you're able to pick up a pawn. Um, hmm. Do I have anything better here? It'd be great if I could attack this thing directly. It's not easy to hit directly. Oh, if the silver weren't here, I could move the rook over and push this pawn directly. How do we get the silver moving then? I think we push this, move the silver up, or I push this one. Um. Normally I'd advocate pushing the... Well, this one also aims directly on the bishop's head. That would... Normally that would make sense, except here they'd maybe be able to get the bishop on this diagonal instead. Um, I could move the silver directly back and bring the rook over. It seems crude, and they'd be able to deal with this issue point pretty easily. Um... Hmm. 
not sure what they're planning. My king doesn't feel safe here at all. Well, if I push this twice, I could threaten stuff. No, I need to I need to fight for the center squares. Um Hmm. Hmm. Well, I'm trying to figure out how to attack without creating obvious targets. It's not easy. Also, where do I want my king to end up? Okay, so if I aim to play right side king... Hmm. It's not easy to get that. Yeah, they want a very swift attack to try to mm, punish things in the... punish my temporary weaknesses. Um... It's hard to make decisions here. Okay, I think... well, no, if I push this, they could push the center pawn. And if I were to take again... Mm, that's fine. I don't care for it. The most flexible thing I can do is this, which does complicate the whole bring the rook to the left side and try to immediately pressure their rook cheapo. That cheapo is not really available. Um, I really wanted that cheapo to work out, but like there's so many ways they can repel it, so I shouldn't focus on that one cheapo. Instead here I can build... now since my silver's moved here, um, I was thinking I could bring this other silver up and gold up and silver up and build something sort of like Crab Castle. Fake Crab Castle, I guess. I don't know. Gotta name these things somehow. Um, another possibility might be gold up, silver up, rook over anyway. Just flies in the face of conventional wisdom. Um, but yeah, they want to pressure this file here. So I'd rather not make it easy for them to do that. <laughs> I could open this diagonal immediately. And no, that's extremely unwise. Let's not. Um... All right, I'm going to prevent bishop 5-5. Five five. So, yeah, we're both building strong-ish shapes here. Um, I'm playing something that's like a handicapped castle shape. That's interesting. So I might debate... Might consider pushing this pawn up and gold up next, but that's so dangerous. But 
this pressure on this file is going to be very difficult for them to deal with. I guess also I could just move this gold... I don't know. I could also push this edge pawn to stop this bishop from getting too dangerous. And then push this... or maybe in the other sequence. This one first. Try to break this file open. I don't know. It's not clear to me what I should be aiming at. If I bring the silver up too far, and this pawn up, we've almost built the Urashino attack, minus uh, having the bishop here to support it. But yeah, they've built this nice clump of pieces here. And while Shogi is about attacking the opposing king, this is the game of generals. Um, this file is something that, like, this gold has to stay somewhere in this vicinity to oppose my just wanton pushing up the file. All right, they finally closed this diagonal. So I'm less paranoid now about bad stuff happening. Not sure if that's a good or a bad thing. Um, hmm. Oh, I've blocked the square that my knight could use if I were to push this, so it's kind of pointless pushing the knight. Um, Still don't know where my king belongs. Yeah, let's push this to blunt this bishop from ever being useful there. So for this bishop to become useful again, they'd either need to open the diagonal or find some way to route it through their other pieces. I'm not sure this pawn move was... No, no, that's not necessary either, but... All right, the caveman attack is go. I mean, it's a bit embarrassing doing this caveman attack, but like, I'm looking for other ideas, not finding other ideas, and I'm really obsessed with this caveman attack, so... Um, looks like that's going to be plan. Oh, wow. That does not repel the attack. So the issue points are this point, this point, this point, and this point. There are currently four issue points, and once all four of these issue points have been conquered, then my rook can promote behind the pawn. 
So this bold move does not defend any of these issue points here. Um, granted, it's what I've done is kind of weird. Um, surely there was some other way forward for my pieces. But I guess what they're going to need to do is get a pawn in hand. Because that could repel. They've got two turns to do it. Um, so I'll have to push this immediately. And I should have seen that coming. But I got excited about my plan. Even a pawn can be enough to fight back against this. Until, say, I get a silver or a knight or something else supporting my attack. So, yeah, if they push, I push. They take my pawn, I push again. They're actually a move too slow, aren't they? I mean, my king's a sitting duck, but I do get to promote and break my way and start taking things. Alternatively, if they push, I take. Lance takes. Pawn drop. I No, that doesn't win material. We've been there a hundred times already. Trying to use a pawn to win a lance just materially does not work out. So yeah, if they push, I push, they take, I push again. There's not room to drop a pawn in front of the rook without, like, other than the square where I just take it. Um, so if they're trying to deal with the issue point directly, they'll need one of these pieces to defend this somehow, anywhere. I mean, potentially they could, like, bring the silver back. I don't know. Pawn up, pawn up, pawn up. No, that doesn't seem to deal with my threat. Um, pawn up, pawn up. There's not time for the silver to make it in and stop this threat. Maybe they're looking at uh, just evolving this shape a bit and aren't so concerned about my pawn promotion. That's true, I might be overselling this threat. Um, um, also notice that since their king's on the back rank, I could push the pawn and then promote it, and then rook takes knight as a fork, hitting the king. Um, so unless they do something to block said check, uh, that would be a check, and therefore when this promotes I could sack it over here, and the rook wouldn't be able to take this promoted pawn and have to somehow continue running away. It's true we've very we've diverged from uh, opening and typical opening and castle stuff. Let me turn the volume down a touch. We diverged from where we'd normally be. Um, so uh, normal ideas like building snow roof castle are a bit out of the picture here. The move we spent on this could have been spelt spent elsewhere, but now it's already spent. Yeah, they can't exactly stop this. If they move the gold, that could make additional room for the rook to run to. But my pawn promotes and goes here anyway. I mean, they could retreat the gold. Also giving the rook more space to run to, but... Um, yeah, that's possible. I think I just continue with my... Here we go. If my mouse cooperates. Mm -hmm. And... Yeah, I think I just keep going. There's still nothing they can do to oppose my rook or my pawn. 
and had this gold not retreated, I might have sacrificed something. Oh, right, my own king. Let's not forget that. Um, do I have time for all? Yes, yeah, so if I take here, um, silver takes. I drop a pawn. I have enough force to repel this attack, quite convincingly. If I don't do anything about this immediately, it becomes a much larger problem. That said, I did not consider rook takes, and I should have considered it. Yeah, silver takes, I can drop a pawn, and the silver has to retreat. And normally that would be the strongest thing I'd have to worry about here. Here, though, since I've left this Thank side you, of the board undeveloped, uh, there might be other attacking ideas for me to worry about. If Rook takes you, to defend this, I would like need to drop my bishop, which also attacks here and threatens to take a silver. So I thankfully am covered there, but um, I should have a bit more foresight in such matters. Um, but yeah, this, I have each issue point defended twice, if not more times. So there's not a way for the silver to easily break in here. Um, hmm. I think I take this lance, which allows this threat of Rook takes knight. Owing to this threat, they might have to drop their only pawn. But that doesn't stop my attack. Which, uh, it does slow my attack, it just doesn't stop it. So I'm threatening to take the knight and then take the pawn. Okay, yeah, it's good to activate your pieces. Blocking the bishop in the first place did hurt more than we imagine. Um, I activate my dragon. So they could drop a pawn again. I'm debating, like, do I reinforce this, or what might I do? Um, also, maybe Lance 5-5 five five was... It seemed crazy, and that's why I didn't do it. But it was an option. And I'm not looking at all of my options, so... I'm not doing... In that respect, I'm not doing myself any favors. I'm conserving energy, but there's no need. Yeah. So, this is still a weakness. Mm -hmm. I take silver takes pawn drop. I take here. I take back. I've still got everything covered, but it's not comfortable. It doesn't need to be. I still have things covered. I don't have... maybe I have better. I didn't see anything better last time, but maybe there is something better here. But no, the pawn drop 5-6 threat looks so serious. Um, like, if they were to drop here, I'd be in trouble, so... That kind of forces my hand, no? Hmm. 
30秒。All right, back we go. Oh, I guess this is a target. I mean, they got three generals, a rook, and a bishop, and a knight defending the king. And you could maybe count this silver as well. So, I'm not optimistic about checkmate and say the next five or ten moves here. It looks very hard to break this up. Um,. Hmm. Okay. I'll just bring my jit castle glob together in case something does go to crap. Um, so uh, next I'm considering running my king out here and then dropping the lance. Oh, but they could drop a pawn to block my lance. Sanjudio. That seems reasonable. Um... That's interesting too. Sanjudio Yonjudio Gojudio Itch Ni San Shi Go. This looks like a way forward. If they defend this, I can attack it again. I don't see how they defend it twice. Um, also, maybe I could consider sacking on the square if things get insane. But yeah, I was considering briefly, like, dropping a lance here, rook takes dropping a knight, and exchanging multiple pieces here, but it, that loses material. Um, ah, yes, this can defend this point. Um... Lance, Rook, takes, 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 take. Oh, wait. No, yeah, that's fine. 
Um, Confirmation bias can be a problem. Seeing what you want to see. Just because you want to see it. Still, this this can't be entirely wrong. It might not be best, but um, there might be better ways about this than what I'm doing. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, if I push here, silver takes, and now I drop a fish up. Hmm. That's still not enough. If I attack this directly, how do they defend it? They don't? Hmm. Okay. So, I mean, their king does get to safety here, and that's for them what was crucial. My token's still floating here in the corner because of my cowardly attacking moves earlier that let me get these two pieces and promote the rook. But I might have had something decisive earlier that I missed. Um, so I can't defend this point. Uh, without giving up that point. But my attack might be on sound. Right. Well, how unsound could it be? Alright, I take... Right, so I could do knight takes or lance takes, depending which piece I want to give them and... How, rather, how many pieces I want to give them. Um, in light of that, it seems clear what to do. Thirty All right, you get my lance. I will live with that. And then I can take here. And I'm attacking the rook and the silver. And then I can attack other things on future turns. The gold is still hanging. The silver is defended by the rook. The rook is hanging. Or I'm sorry, the gold and silver are both defended by the rook. So if the rook disappears, I get two generals. I might... I don't have a way to attack this easily, and it is twice defended, but that's what I wish I could hit. Um, yeah, probably the rook just moves sideways here. And then if I take this... I mean, my knight's not going anywhere else, but where's my attack? 
Hmm. Oh, my attack does continue. But the rook continues its dancing as I continue hitting it over and over. Um... Yeah, let's take a gold general. So the rook is, again, not protected. I could drop a gold here? Gold takes, horse takes... No, uh, actually, rook takes. Yeah, that looks nice. Gold, king moves away. Take this, they take... I don't know. Um, oh, this is defended. Hang on. Let me not screw this up. All right, so the rook's floating, the pawn's floating. I could have had this check. Didn't think it worked. Maybe it did work, and I just am completely blind. Probably it worked. Yeah, horse takes, king over, gold drop. Would have been reasonable. Um, and then gold takes here. Instead, I found this, which... Probably can't be that bad. Mm -hmm. So I can take here now, which was what I was thinking a turn ago. Um, this is loose, but I'm threatening mate. Mate threats are nice. All right, so threatening mate here, threatening mate there. I could probably find a way to defend this if I had to. It is a bit strange having only one of my pawns moving. Well, I'm sorry, this one did move also. But, like, most of my pawns are staying back home this game. Because we entered the endgame so quickly. Okay, that stops the one mate threat. Thanks for the game. I completely get where that comes from, and it's an honest error. I would make the same error. Uh, So, yeah, um, as is tradition, we allow airing of the grievances, etc. As I think, was it Killer Ducky put it that way? Or is it Nick Sabicki? I forget. I think it was Nick. <laughs> yeah. Oh, thank you. Yep. Sharp stuff. Uh. Uh, when you're ready, uh, can we analyze from the beginning? Yep. These games are always fun to look at. And that's what makes our teaching ladder so exciting or interesting. <laughs> sure. <laughs> All right. Ooh, it looks like I get to guide our analysis today. 
That's fair. Yep. So, yeah, good old static work theory. Um, I've always been curious about this and maybe confused it with other things I've played. Yeah. I think this bishop trade here is silly. Yeah. Yeah. It looks so confusing. So, we're first talking about this bishop exchange. Bishop takes 7-7. Seven, seven. And, yeah, either this is good or bad, but boy, it's quite a fire. Oh, but the rook could rush in after the bishop and pawn trade. Oh, I see. Yeah, and he, he missed this here. Yeah, I could see that. Um, yeah, that's... Uh, understandable. I've made worse mistakes than this in the past. Um, yeah. I guess if you're assuming that, like, I'm doing this... Yeah, that it looks more like that, then. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I was fortunate enough to have a different way about it. So, let's see. Yeah, this should be the logic if I initiate the exchange first. Yeah, uh, good point, yeah. Um, on the other hand, uh, it took me many moves to activate uh, my rook. So like, the way this played out in the game, uh, this stops me from pushing here. So, um, um, yeah. So maybe it's fine. Yeah, I don't know. Um, and if I move the silver, this gets tricky, since now there's a pawn drop and you can threaten the knight. Um, yeah, at our level, uh, many things are playable. Many, many things can be played at our level. <laughs> uh, oh, so let's say... Um, how do we manage this? So... Let's... Uh, if I do something like this... Um... Uh... I'm not sure. So, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's sad for a while, but um, it, it can be hard to get the pawn in hand. Eventually you'll get one. Um, like, do I castle into this, or do I castle over here? I don't know. It seems really confusing. Ah. Uh, 
Okay, so he's saying he played defensively this game. Yeah, and that's something I might do too. I do like my castles, but they're not always necessary. Um, so, yeah, this is... Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah, this pawn move here, too, is interesting. It did surprise me a little bit. Hmm. So, oh, interesting. Yeah, no, that actually makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah, I missed this. <laughs> hmm. Um. So. Yeah, like, I considered other attacking ideas for sure. So they, I mean, okay. I played my one defensive move here, but it's like this. Or something like this. Or something like this. And trying to aim there. Like, uh... So, I just kept delaying. Uh, so, yeah. And I guess, uh, so like if I'm threatening stuff over here, and over here, and like here too. Uh, um, yeah. So that's what I was aiming to do this game, is try to force them to defend on every avenue on the board. Um, and that they did pretty reasonably well. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, Static Rook isn't my best opening. Yeah, but... Um, <laughs> It's good fun to try it out. Uh, yeah. Um. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he was not prepared for this. Um, yeah. So... I don't even know how. Uh... So this here gives up that point. Um, so you can't exactly defend this point very easily. And that's what convinced me to go for it. Um, otherwise, who knows how long I would have sat on the idea before committing to it. But yeah. Um, 
So perhaps something um I'm not really sure what's going on here. Um Yeah, my weird castle. <laughs> this is a fun one, isn't it? Hmm. Yeah, I need a name for it. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The frontline castle. Sounds good. Um, but yeah, he, was, he had his mind set on playing a particular shape. Um, hmm. I'm trying to remember. Like, clearly I had my mind uh... <laughs> uh... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Melkor knows what he's doing. I'm making up what I'm doing. But um it's a strong teaching ladder this weekend. Yeah, that's fair. So, um, ah, uh, so the concept here, issue points. Um, so these are, uh, these are the squares where you can stop my attack. Um, otherwise, there's no stopping it. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. So you just barely make it. Um, or rather, this makes it with time to spare. Yes, yeah, so this square is defended. Um, I wonder, can I just get away with um, like this? Um, yeah. Yeah, maybe the king itself defends this point. Um Yeah, this is <laughs>
Yeah. I don't know what this right side king is, but, like, you've got a solid block of pieces defending the center. I don't know if it's viable here. It might not be. I, I don't know. Um, maybe this to get a pawn? Yeah. This might be the most reasonable way. I don't know why it took me so long to find this idea. It seems... yeah. Um, that looks tricky. Right. Yeah, that's the problem. Um, yeah. So how does this all work? Ah, uh, yeah. I miss that. That's a pretty key idea here. <laughs> I miss that. Um, so yeah, this is why we do post-game analysis together. Um, that looks so dangerous, but maybe issue points are covered. Oh wait. Oh wait a second. Uh, uh yeah this is defended once you need two defenders here um so yeah this whole oh well that's interesting too so, yeah, if you bring the bishop all the way back, um, you might be able to defend this point. Yeah. That's cool. Um... Yes, yeah, so that's quite clever. And that might be a way to hold this together uh, in this uh, defending against my extremely weird attack. Yeah, so potentially... Oh, I don't really know where this rook ends up. There's lots of fun things happening here. Um... So, I have to be super careful, because, <laughs> um, yeah, if my king gets attacked, this falls apart. But this open second rank is an interesting idea. Um, it just seems also pretty dangerous. Ah... Uh, I've dropped bishop earlier than expected. Um, so, yeah, when you drop the bishop way back here... I uh, decided to play some slower attack and try keeping uh, the bishop in hand because um, there's just a lot of things they have to figure out oh yeah uh so this here
Yeah. Also done the bishop drop. Uh, they're both good, but I think this one's better. Um, just looks difficult for me to break this open. <laughs> hmm. This is interesting. How do I break this open? Mm. I do something crazy like this. I've got to watch out. So I don't really want to do that. Um, Oh, yes. Yeah, I've got time to do these things. Yeah. Yeah, it's exactly the right idea. Uh, this sort of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I've got time to do this attack, so this is the way we go. Yeah, Static Rook isn't my best opening. I'm still learning this stuff, but yeah. That's fine. Oh, actually, yeah. <laughs> um... Uh, sure. I guess. This could be fun. This could be interesting. So, I played this. I don't really know. Um, not sure what it is they're intending here. Okay, yeah, this pawn advances. Yeah, if I try it out, we're referring to, like, mutually moving pieces on the same board. Which is not entirely uncommon in terms of how we've done post-game analyses in the past. Um, what to do? Hmm. Hmm. It's... I'm finding myself hesitating a lot here. Because that bishop drop provides me a lot to think about. Um, it would be nice to have some easy way to break in here. Oh, I wonder. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that's interesting, too. Um, I wonder if I can break in. Hmm. Wait, did I have that the whole time? Did I miss that earlier? Oh. Wow, this, this pawn drop. <laughs> Uh, yeah. That's interesting. Hmm. So, maybe that means, um... 
Yeah, against this, yeah, this uh, threatens that. So maybe this move is, uh, yeah. Um, so pawn four four. I mean, goodness, this is kind of a mess, isn't it? How do you do this? Yeah, if you drop the bishop, then I'm the only one with the bishop in hand. And this gives you a lot to think about. Um, but maybe you're right. That that might actually be correct. <laughs> yeah. And perhaps I didn't. Oh. Oh, well, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you for supporting America's nonprofit, uh, the Electronic Frontier Foundation. It's a great cause. <laughs> yeah, it's in our game here. Yeah, that was quite the clever drop. Um, at the point at which that happened in our game. Um, but yeah, this it's funny thinking about everything that happened or could have happened or should have happened here. Um... Yeah, this here. Um. <laughs> so, yeah, normally I'd be afraid of making moves like this, um, but here not so much. Um. <laughs> yeah, so it's, uh, it's a bit risky, but it's a smart strategy to use that sort of attack. Um. Yeah. So here, yep, this is what we're looking at. Yep. Um, yeah. I guess, yeah, I shouldn't nitpick the edge pawn moves too much, because I make those sorts of moves too. Um, yeah, this here, um, yep, so, um, So I might still try this. Um, yep. 
Yeah, I missed... That's a really interesting idea, actually. Um, the bishop doesn't... Well, maybe it does get out. It's sometimes... Yeah. So... The, my opponent might have accidentally protected their king here. Um, oh, interesting. Yeah, this is a good point as well, that if I sack the bishop for the gold, um, yeah, that could be risky. Um, so, like, if I were to do this... Yeah, and this is... Yeah, I'm taking notes. <laughs> uh... Yeah, that makes sense. Oh, wow. Wow, wow. Yeah, so maybe this was actually necessary to stop a lot of fun tactics that could have been more fun. Um, yes, yeah, so this is quite good. Uh, I was looking at other tactics too. So like with the idea of getting the king into here, um, I saw that potentially something like this could happen. So it was very, very close here. Um, but in the line here with the gold uh, here, this actually protects the king. So this breaks up my tactic, which is quite clever. Yeah. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> like, damn, he saw that. <laughs> um, but no, it's a good reason, a good move for multiple reasons. So you take those. <laughs> I mean, you look here. I've got all these squares that are not defended. So, um, um Uh, I missed this, that, yeah, this is clever. <sighs> yeah, it's scary. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, this is really good counterplay. That, like, I had no business of allowing my opponent to do, but it happened anyway. Yeah. Well, you say it's not scary. What about this? Welcome. We just finished our teaching lighter game and we're doing post game analysis, but yeah, welcome killer ducky and folks. Um so yeah, this is interesting. Yeah. 
But yeah, so back here, um, um, uh, but so like if I try something like this, um, it's just kind of a very hot mess here. Um, like, I don't know. Yeah. Well, that's true. Yeah, maybe not, but definitely enough to give me a scare. Because um, I've not done anything to defend my king in a situation like this. Um, it's like this is hanging, potentially, I don't know. There's stuff going on in this position, but... Um, Um, so there's that sack, then there's this one, where I have to step aside and, like, I don't know. It's kind of a mess. I guess I sidestep that this way, and then you promote, and maybe I block this? This looks so dangerous. Um... There's stuff to look out for. So, um, oh yeah, we can also get over the host hat thing. Because it's more interesting in many ways to allow um, both players to move the pieces. So, yeah, like, my king is not in the safest of locations here. Uh, yeah, that's useful. So maybe we take here now? Um, oh. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, the key point is that, like, they've actually built a castle and done all the good stuff there. I'm off collecting material in the corner of the board. And, yeah. Um. So, there's stuff to figure out. Um. Oh. Uh So the issue point would be this square here. So maybe I just go back. So I've got this covered twice. But yeah, so the key point though is like, this is so, this is how you launch a counterattack and find chances. Um, so, um, uh, 
So I was thinking about this rook takes this bishop drop hitting this and that. Um, yeah, there's just a lot going on. And um, I'm not sure the best way to handle all of it. So, yeah. Um, yeah, one five five here was pretty good. Um, <laughs> there's only so much you can do here. Uh, yeah, I think I read this out correctly. That, like, I didn't see a way for this to break through my issue points here, so I've got, like, two pieces defending each point. Um, everything's just, like, super well defended from the head. Frontline castle. Yeah, actually, this is like how um, you'll find history books talk about military formations. I forget the name of this formation, but it's a thing in military history. Um, Yeah, so. Uh, yeah. It, there, it's a lot harder. Yeah. It's so, so difficult to defend at this point. Um, I don't know what I would do. Um, yeah, maybe this delays the inevitable, but it, it's so rough. I don't know. Uh, I need to use my pawns to attack something. I uh, don't know exactly what I'd be attacking, but I've got pawns, pawns, open lines, yeah. Um, but yeah, I need four attackers for this to prevail. Um, so it's just, yeah, at this point, yeah, having retreated there, this just wasn't really possible to save. Um, mm -hmm. 
yeah, if you're just going back and forth and giving a move, um, then yeah, that just gives me all the time in the world. Yeah, other than that, I think those were the key points here. It's there's only so much they can do to defend everything at once. Yeah. It's just kind of cascaded. Like, you can't let the pawn go, but if you try to hold on to it, everything falls, too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing else worked, so I found this. Um, like, I was impressed just how hard it was to find something that breaks in here. Uh, but no, it's convincing. Um, yeah, so here... Uh, hmm. The particulars of how this gets handled, I'm not sure. But, yeah, there is a lot of chances for if I only go, if I do go this way. Um, uh, yes, that defends here. Um... <laughs> I wonder, can I do this? This would be fun, right? <laughs> How fun would this be? Yeah, i probably die here, right? Maybe this is too much. Yeah. Um... Like, where's the game-winning sack? Or if we quote Marvin the Martian, where's the earth-shattering kaboom? Yeah. Yeah, what I did in the game seemed to work. Um... Yes, now they're rook hangs. Uh, yeah, this... Uh, it's too hard. There's probably no defense here. Um, everything's all overworked. Uh, there's too much. So that's my guess. Yeah, and that defends the obvious thing, but um, I, yeah, I'm not sure if there was anything here. I don't think so. Uh, uh. Yep. Um. Uh, 
So that's how our game concluded here. Uh, sharp stuff. Um, <laughs> I wonder what other remarks we're going to say at this point. Um, it was a really sharp game. I was impressed. I was forced to find some interesting resources and change up. Like I got to play Frontline Castle here because I was so obsessed with my attacking idea. Um, and that Bishop 3-3 drop in, early in the game gives me stuff to think about, too. Because I used to do that a lot. Uh, <laughs> yep. You don't get to promote on your own side of the board, and I think that's what makes some of these attacks so exciting or successful, is that not only do I get to drop pieces in, and our like lances and knights and other pieces have a forward bias, um, but also you don't get to promote on your own side of the board, so it's, oh sure, it can be really challenging to defend. Oh yeah, and I didn't even mention that one tactic that I'd seen. Um, uh, during the game. That I didn't think worked out. I'm pretty sure I was right. Hmm. This definitely gives me... It puts up some resistance here. So, I've run out of pieces to drop, almost. And dropping a gold to capture a gold isn't going to change this dynamic very much. Unless I've missed something. Maybe I have. Um, so, might be the best and only drop. Let's, I think it's the only drop. Um... Yeah, that's... T oh, right. This damn rook is so close by. Yeah. That rook weren't so close by, I could consider some fun sacrifices, but it actually does a good job defending. Um... Oh, that's clever. I wonder here... So now that we have a gold general, how does this proceed? <laughs> Wait, no, we don't do that because I forgot about this. Um, we run. <laughs> yeah, here we go. Gotta run. Totally safe. Uh. Just barely. But it's such a bad castle, this frontline castle, when I drop this point. <laughs> yeah. So that's apparently how I get my king to safety here. I wonder... Maybe I should do this. Um, <laughs> yeah. Ladder games are so much at stake. 
I mean, yeah, the thought that like we'd play a game and not be able to learn from it afterward would be tragic. Um, but yeah, this I think continues the attacking idea. Um, and eventually, if I could attack this lance might have to sack the dragon to remove the silver and be able to continue hitting this super hard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Swinging Rook Joseki or something else. Not that I necessarily know them, but gotta give them be a little lenient Yeah. My fastest, riskiest mate is probably fair. It's the way you keep the game exciting for everyone. Um, I just think, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was exciting. I'll take notes and try to do better next time. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Um, yep, so due to the time zone difference, it's, well, I'm sorry, my remark doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or rather, good night. But yeah, cool. Nice. Um, so... I usually give some sort of closing remark. What kind of closing remark can I give this game? This game, I played the Static Rook jo opening. Tried to play Static Rook Joseki. I've several times seen openings where this bishop move gets played and it results in something like this. I didn't really know for sure where this might end up between some combination of this bishop drop, this knight advance, Maybe something else? I don't know. Maybe take the pawn, but that looks risky. There's a lot going on here. Maybe I should push this. I'll have to research this at some point. Because I've been seeing this in some geekos, but recommending this sometimes in some of my games. I'd like to know under what circumstances you do this and when you don't. Um, oh, I forgot to mention to my opponent like the idea of closing this diagonal and bringing this up and whatever. They've seen it before. They'll learn it eventually. Joseki don't matter that much unless you're playing gambits or super sharp things. And if you're playing with fire, I guess it helps to know it. Uh, it's good they did defend this point so I don't get to take it for free. So otherwise, maybe I would have sacked both these pieces to try something nuts and Maybe that would have been unwise. I don't think I would have done it, but, you know, maybe spur of the moment. Who knows? Here, I do have everything defending against a bishop drop. And this was an aggressive way to proceed. It makes a lot of sense. I don't know where their king ends up, and... Yeah, I guess they can play, like, Crab Castle or some other castle here. Whereas, I don't really have an easy castle shape. Maybe right side king if I knew it. Um, this gold move might be unwise. Maybe I should try to... I don't know. This potential drop over here had me super concerned, and I didn't know how best to defend it. But, um, yeah, overall, uh, this caveman attack worked really well. Probably far better than it should have, because they do have this possibility. They could also, like, exchange pawns somehow and try to stop this, although probably not at this point. At this point, they'd have to, like, stop it this way. But earlier, prior to this silver move, they might have had some other way of gaining a pawn and using it, but probably the gold over is useful. And if they do this, I don't know what I would have done, truthfully. Um, so, like, yeah, if I can lure the gold over one more square... 
And then that does, I guess, freeze the king in place to defend this point, at least until this is not hanging. Um, or until this pathway from the bishop to promote is blocked, and therefore I can't drop and gain a huge profit from it. Oh, but yeah, this too is an idea to look at. There's lots and lots of ideas to consider. Um, yeah, and then our opponent uh, retreats, and the rest was history. So, yeah, I hope we enjoyed this game and the post-game analysis together. And we'll look forward to playing more interesting openings and castles and such in the future and doing more post-game analyses with the opponent's help. Uh, thanks again to the Twitch account Lump Note uh, for their donation to the Electronic Frontier Foundation. Oh, they're the leading nonprofit in the U.S. defending digital privacy, free speech, and innovation. So you can check out EFF's mission statement and more at their EFF.org. They're a great cause, and I hope they'll continue to do great work so that we can continue having free software and great technology um, and uh, defending our digital rights. Thanks for watching.